I'm Israel. I came from Spain, from Granada, a pretty nice and beautiful city in the south of Spain. I am software engineer at Red Hat, working on the district tracing team. Um, and while also I'm part of different community programs like uh, Google Europe Expert, I used to be also uh, AWS community builder, something, right? And well, other, other things. Actually, the thing is that I don't know how I was on fire because I do a lot of community and um, I don't know how I am able to make my spring uh, every three weeks, right? Or something. But yeah, well, so um, the things that today we are going to talk about problems, okay? Um, let's imagine that this is you. Uh, I hope that you are as happy as this guy. Um, one day you receive a call, it's your boss saying, hey, everything is failing. Can you take a look? Well, this is where the fun begins, right? Okay, we are not going to see too many blood um, during the during the talk. So, well, the thing is that if you are lucky enough, right? What you do is that you go to a dashboard, um, and well, you can see that there are too many apps. Uh, most of them failing. Some of them are failing, but not too much. Others, you have no information. Uh, also, you don't know how they are related between them, right? So this is a dashboard where you are getting some alerts, right? And those alerts are generated from metrics. Um, so again, you see that thing, and you start crying and say, okay, let's see what we can do, okay? So you are lucky enough, you have some metrics, and well, actually what are metrics? Metrics is what we call before monitoring, right? The regular one, but now with a more fancy name, um, and yeah, well, the thing is that you can do things like you create, you store a, a Prometheus server in your infra, right? If you are running Kubernetes or whatever. Um, and well, you expose in your different applications one endpoint that is exposing metrics. And what is metrics? Metrics is just saying, hey, I am spending this amount of memory, or I am filling this amount of requests, or making properly these amounts of requests, and things like that, right? Um, you can get information about, not just about your application itself, but about the runtime, the, the platform where it's running, like the operating system and other things, right? So you get all that information, you send it to a Prometheus, well, actually Prometheus will scrape that, right? And um, from that you can generate alerts, um, generating, well, integrate with things like uh, directly Slack or, or have automated calls and things like that, right? Um, and well, uh, you know when something is not going well. Also, you can, well, just really go in, right, and see nice dashboards. That's the one that uh, your manager loves to see because managers love dashboards. Um, okay, so you know that something is failing, so maybe you are also lucky enough and you have an infra for, for logs. So in a similar way, right, you can send logs from your application and also from the infra and the different things that you, you are using, like databases or the stuff to a central location, and with that you can do some kind of analysis and also generate another da dashboard, right? Like what are the errors that are happening more frequently in your system and things like that, right? Um, if you are not lucky enough, um, you have to go application by application asking for the logs, right? And you get something like this because very likely you were not the one who code the thing or, or, or maybe you were, but one year ago or something, right? And actually, the only thing that you can read is this in your mind while you are trying to lo read the logs. Um, okay. So, NCT enters the room. So, well, how can we avoid this hell, right? About not knowing what's happening. Um, well, the problem is that um, we are wrong on the way of trying to monitor our applications, right? So this is one, this is the, the panel from an aircraft, of a modern aircraft, um, one for um, Airbus, I don't remember exactly which one. Um, well, you can see there that they have a lot of dashboards that we don't know exactly what they mean, right? But very likely if something starts to be going red, we are on danger. Um, and the thing is that instead of being doing observability like this, right? 
uh, we are doing it like in the older ways, right? So let's imagine this is today our application, right? But we are doing observability like if our application were like this. Okay, we are still just checking logs and maybe metrics, right? So how can we solve that? Well, we are gonna talk about this root tracing that actually I love to explain this as the free docs problem. How is this dog doing? Tell something, please, be interactive. It's, it's sit down, right, or something, right? Oh, how about this one? Stand up, right? How about this one, apart from SAT? Relax. Yeah, relax it. So this is the real problem. <laughs> and this is what usually happens when you are working with your, with your services, right? Where, where you have a big, a big application that has different services, and in this case, it was just free. Let's imagine something like Amazon or, or Google, right? And maybe you are just selling, uh, I don't know, uh, World of Warcraft things in a single page application, you don't need this, right? But, um, well, the thing is that uh, with tracing, now we're gonna see how, what we can see is the complex, the, the full transaction, right, in our applications. So with logs and metrics, you see how the different services are behaving individually, right? But you don't have the context. You don't know the relationship that is gonna be between the different parts of the application. Okay, so the thing is that <coughs> this retracing actually it's just saying, okay, we are gonna generate some um, structure logs, right? Where we are gonna explain for different um, things that we're gonna be do doing, different uh, operations, where the operation starts and um, where it ends, right? And also we are gonna be able to like, uh, create dependencies between the, the, application, the operations, right? So we can see exactly how much time we are spending on the different parts of our operations. So for instance, let's imagine that this, this will be a trace, right, of a request in an endpoint on a website or something. So this will be uh, the, um, the total amount from the request, but later we can analyze, right, how our, um, um, our requests were, were touching the different microservices, right? Uh, just in case there is a bottleneck or something, we can detect pretty fast, or if there is a failure, we can see exactly there where is the failure and what parameters are we using to go into that. So this is, for instance, Jaeger, the UI of Jaeger, uh, with one um, thing running. So there you can see exactly, right, uh, how much time you are spending on the different uh, sub-operations, and just in case something fails, you are gonna see it there pretty easily, okay? I was afraid of being a sparking water. Um, okay, so the things that even there are companies that are removing the other signals, the other uh, information, and are becoming on distributed tracing first companies. Why? Because if you check these, the things that you can add metadata to those spans, to those logs, so now you have the logs, you don't need also to have logs apart from that, and also you can extract some metrics from this, right, because you can have, for instance, red metrics that are requests, endurance, and duration metrics. So you can know exactly the operations, how much time are taking, and things like that. So you can generate al alerts based on your traces. So you know this operation should take, I don't know, maybe 300 milliseconds. If at some point it's one second and a half, maybe something is going pretty wrong, right? Okay. So the things that actually we are, what we are talking about is about observability, that is just sending a bunch of data to a Sauron AI, right, so we can have a dashboard to give to our manager, because yeah, as we said, managers love dashboards. Um, and when we can correlate and um, see exactly what's happening in our application. Um, I love exactly how the, how the Wikipedia describes this uh, the observability, because it's like a system is observable when you can infer the internal state of the system just with the with some imp uh, with some outputs, right? So this is what we are doing here. We are not checking the the code to know exactly what's happening, but we can see how well or bad our system is performing, right? Even in what part um, we are having maybe problems. So the things that well with metrics we can see a there is an issue. 
with logs, what's the issue, right? Maybe you are writing to the wrong place or, I don't know, a problem with permissions or something else. Um, and well, with traces, it's like, what is the issue, right? Um, these are the three pillars of observability. Usually people talk a lot about this. Also, there is one um, article written by Yuri, I don't remember his surname, that uh, says, talks about temple, and he talks about the six pillars of observability, right? Um, now people also are talking a lot about profiling, but yeah, well, that is for another talk. Oh, well, actually I have it here, right? Um, this article is pretty interesting and I recommend you too much to learn uh, to read it. So well, the thing is that each system has their own APIs, so their own way to send data. So for instance, if I am using Google Cloud, Google Cloud has their own thing for doing observability. If you go to Amazon, they have their own thing. And you need to like, if you switch from one cloud to another, right, you need to change that. Uh, if you are using maybe you are using something like Datadog, Dynatrace, or Splunk, or something like that, right? They have their own agents, so maybe you will need to move from one to another because, well, you don't want to pay too much to these ones, right? And the others came with a better offer or something like that. Um, the things that you are stuck, you have that problem with the vendor locking. So, well, this is where one project came uh, that is Open Telemetry. Open Telemetry came from joining Open Census. That was mo mostly about metrics and open, tra open tracing. That was well about tracing, right? And um, it's a set of SDKs, libraries, uh, binaries that came to like help you with the collection of your telemetry data. And it's important just with the collection, okay? No visualization, nothing else. If you want to visualize a store or whatever, you need other tools. Um, and yeah, well, the full open telemetry project, more or less. Uh, there are some other things, right? But with the idea of having receivers where you can receive data, right? So, for instance, if you have uh, something writing with the old Jigger tracing uh, SDKs, you can consume the data from there. If you have something with the SDKs for Open Telemetry, you can consume from there. If you have Prometheus endpoints, you can consume it from there. Later, you convert all that data to a common thing. You process. So, for instance, you can batch the data. You can remove things that you don't want to have there whatever, and later you export the data. To where? Well, to where whatever you want. Uh, if you have an endpoint using OTLP uh, format, you can send there, but also you have uh, other exporters that you can be using for, for a specific uh, technologies, okay? So the thing is that, for instance, you have the open telemetry collector, because the things that you can do all the other part also in the, is the, in the clients, but you have the open telemetry collector where you can still maybe be sending um, telemetry data in your old format. And from here, you have a single point to configure how you treat your telemetry data. So from here, if you want, you can enable or disable different components that you can use later to process your telemetry data. So for instance, if, if I have a one Jigger instance and also something uh, using OTLP, I can send the telemetry data to both. If at some point I remove the Jigger instance and I, uh, and I install a Grafana Tempo, I can, from here, just do that configuration without changing all my, all my applications, right? <coughs> so it will be something like this, right? So I can have this and do bunching and transformation and all the other stuff, okay? Um, there are a lot of companies working on this, like Datadog, Google, uh, Red Hat, Timescale. Well, the thing is that this is something that um, companies are putting a lot of effort because the thing is that before, due to the vendor locking, right, it was pretty expensive to move from one to another. Even companies are basing their uh, agents now on the Open Telemetry Collector. So, for instance, if you go to Grafana, Grafana uh, deprecated their agent like three or four months ago, I don't remember exactly, and now they created something that is called Grafana Alloy, that is actually something on top of the Open Telemetry Collector, right? Um, so, well, the thing is that after this introduction, actually, right, because usually people, when I talk about this thing and I start talking about the instrumentation, they say, well, but you didn't mention what is observability. Okay, so now we have the full story. Um, the thing is that the open telemetry um, um, libraries, SDKs, things, right, uh, this is the current state for different languages. We are going to focus especially on, on Python because this is a Python conference. But if you see me, for instance, in the .NET conference, I will say exactly the same, but just uh, pointing to the .NET uh, row. So the thing is that currently, well, um, 
In the case of the logs, uh, it's still, uh, still experimental. Um, but well, uh, for metrics and traces that are what we are going to focus here, the, the thing is pretty stable. So again, <coughs> what we are going to see is a demo application, okay, something pretty stupid. Uh, later I will show you actually the full code, but it's more like just a Flask application, and where we are going to receive a, a request, and we are going to request Call, well, we are going to forward the request to another second application. That application is going to be exactly the same, and the third application just responds, re, um, replying to, to the others, right? And we do some sleeps and some, some things, right? Um, just to, to simulate some work. Um, so what we are going to do here is that we are going to send from our applications, we are going to send the telemetry data to an open telemetry collector, and from there we are going to export the data to Jaeger, okay, to see some traces. So all the things that you could be doing these on um, different ways. For instance, you could be using uh, manual instrumentation. Uh, I don't need to tell you that this is not very likely the best idea in the world. Why? Because uh, this was our application and now is this mess. Um, actually, um, you can remove some of this data and inject it using environment variables, but I thought that this would be like most, more dramatic. Um, so well, you can, Maybe if you need it, right, you can instrument something manually. But usually what happens is that people, when they want to start using uh, instrumentation, uh, they have two requests. One is now, and the second one is free. Um, so can you imagine if tomorrow you had to go to your company and somebody says, let's add instrumentation. We want instrumentation for tomorrow. Uh, how many things you will, you will need to modify how many endpoints, how many applications in different languages, and very likely other applications that you don't maintain, like, I don't know, databases and things like that. So that is not, it's not very likely an option, right? So we have something that is the automatic instrumentation. That is amazing because it's automatic, and you don't have to do anything. Um, the things that are a set of libraries, um, I think on Saturday there is during the sprint, are. Uh, one that is about contributing to open telemetry, so um, very smart people are going to be there, so you can ask exactly how the things work. But I think that those libraries, what they actually do is using monkey patching and other techniques. Uh, you, when you call one of the, of the methods that are instrumented automatically, you are actually calling the one from the open telemetry library. It will generate some stuff like traces and other things, right? And finally, it will call the, the real code. Um, even you can create your own library. So for instance, some th somebody from a company that I think is called Traceloop, they created something that is called OpenLL open LL Metry, that are just libraries that you can use to instrument your LLM uh, applications. No, like, I don't know, I don't think that you can do for the training, but at least when you are calling the, the generate and complete method, something like that, right? Um, and how do you do it? Well, the things that you have to install the libraries, depending on the libraries that you are using. So for instance, if you are using Flask, you need to, to install the Flask library for auto instrumentation in your uh, system. And you have a nice, pretty nice CLI that you can use to like to start your application. So instead of starting your application, um, like Flask run, what you do is like you do on this way, right? So this thing, what does is saying, hey, this is the name of my service. I want to export my traces uh, using OTLP and my metrics using OTLP um, to this address, okay? Uh, well, in an insecure way, just because this is, this is Hademo, okay? But don't, don't do that in production or, or at home. Um, but yeah, so I think is that if you are using Kubernetes, actually you can use something that is much better because you have to do almost nothing. And we know that doing almost nothing is pretty nice always. Um, there is something that is called Open Telemetry Operator for Kubernetes that I don't know if you are familiar with operators, but there are programs, right, that you can use like to automate some tasks when you have to deploy stuff on Kubernetes. So it things that this has a feature that allows you to auto-instrument your, your applications, okay? So we are gonna see, we are gonna see the thing. Uh, thanks for the look to me. Uh, okay, I will check later. So one well, of the things that our application is gonna be, maybe it's too big, give me a second. Uh, as I said, right, it's just, hey, send this request, right? We do some simulation of work. Um, 
the second application is going to be exactly the same. OK, and the third one, it's just sleeping a little bit, um, reply. OK, so um, <coughs> in the case of the Jaeger thing, right, it's just creating a Jaeger instance. I am going to show you later what is Jaeger exactly, I mean the UI. Um, and well, we have we can create one one open terminal collector. We are gonna go later a little bit more about how this configuration that can seems a little bit crappy looks like uh, and what it's doing. But actually, it's like just saying, hey, I want to receive data for traces through OTLP. We are not gonna do any processing, and also we are gonna export via OTLP to, to the Jagger thing. Um, we are gonna see later what is this, this magic. Um, for metrics, something similar. We are gonna receive via OTLP and we are gonna export via Prometheus. So the thing is that um, I have my application running here, okay? This is the open terminal collector um, logs. Um, okay, and here I am running core, okay, to my, to my application. So you can see that this is saying buy, okay? So if I go to the Jaeger UI, I will find that I have zero services, so I have nothing like showing traces. If I um, refresh the the thing, I will f you will find that, well, actually now we have one, but it's because Jaeger itself is instrumented, which is pretty nice. Um, oh, okay, so the thing is that now, what we are gonna do is that we are gonna create something that this Jager, well, open telemetry operator um, has that is an instrumentation object, okay? And here what we are gonna say, hey, hey, export my traces to this endpoint, okay? And this thing that you just always copy and paste from other places until you understand what you are doing. Um, but yeah, so we are gonna do it. So we create it, and nothing happens, okay? But now we have to restart our applications. So it will take a little bit. Usually when you are using a production service, it does, uh, ser a production cluster, it doesn't take too much. Uh, but the thing is that I am running other things here, so very, very likely the thing is becoming Crazy. Come on, do it. Please, do something. Okay, now it's there, okay? Um, so the thing is that very likely this thing broke. Yeah, okay. We have to do this. Uh, okay, we are still receiving the buy, okay? So when we restart the thing, Oh, no, what did it happen? <laughs> yeah, connection refused, why? No, it's not DNS, come on. A stupid Jaeger. <laughs> Okay, in the meantime, I am gonna tell you what happened to me to yesterday when I leave the conference. So the thing is that it was just going out from the underground, and one guy tried to rob me. Um, don't worry, I am good, I am here. Um, but yeah, the thing is that he tried to take my back pretty hard. Um, and yeah, the thing is that um, somebody tried, oh, this is the problem, okay, I found the problem, I found the problem. <laughs> Uh, the thing is that I turned back, right? So I hit him um, pretty hard. And I closed my eyes and I did the windmill like this. Um, yeah, and somebody helped me later. First time this thing happens to me. Not the demo thing, the, the problem with the rob. <laughs> with the rover, yeah. Actually, this demo failed a lot of times. Um, yeah, give me a second, it's recreating the thing, it's not gonna take too much, okay, now we are here, 
Okay, so now if I restart this, now we are gonna see here four services. Okay, uh, so if we go to application one and we check for traces, we are gonna find that the application was automatically instrumented. So now um, I'm gonna increase a little bit the zoom. So the things that now we can see things like uh, what HTTP verb was used, the status code, uh, what kind of request we did, right? So a lot of information like the name of the container and other stuff. Uh, this was done automatically, so I didn't add any open telemetry code to my application, which is amazing because you can do it with different languages and everything, right? And everything is gonna be interoperable and, and you're gonna get a lot of information. So the thing is that also, <coughs> we are generating the traces. The SDK is gonna be generating some metrics, but also, uh, if you check, I have something here that is the spam metrics. So what we do just is that we enable it, okay? And we say, hey, when you are receiving traces, export whatever stuff you have to this spam metrics thing, and in the metrics, receive from the spam metrics. So what we are doing is that we are generating metrics from our traces. So if we go to the um, metrics endpoint from our open telemetry collector, it's gonna fail because it was restarted. Uh, we're gonna be there soon, trust me. Um, or not. <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, I am not touching the correct place, it's this one, come on. Uh, this is for the application, yeah. Now we have a lot of, I mean, we have populated here, right, the, the endpoint, right? So we can have some storegrams and everything. So we can just with our traces see exactly what's happening in my application with zero code. Uh, if you are, for instance, using, so is somebody um, used to work with Istio? Service mesh. Okay, so well, the things that you are used to use uh, Istio, in Istio one of the things is that it still generates traces itself, but if you want to have traces, like the full transaction, because otherwise you are gonna have just tra uh, met, um, traces that are of two spans, you have to propagate the context. And to propagate the context, there is uh, some documentation there that says that you have to propagate, um, oh, t -t 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 -t. you have to propagate all these headers, right? So this means some coding. So the thing is that, uh, something that also you can do with this magic thing is, is that you can tell it, hey, propagate. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Propagate those headers for me. So that is done also automatically, right? Um, which is pretty nice. There are a lot of work here. Um, and all the, also the things that company, the, all the companies are switching to this, right? Uh, and it's not just something that you have to use for, you can use for cloud. For instance, also there are a lot of work behind, I mean, uh, making edge devices uh, observable using this, right? So with a single binary, you can, we can send all the, um, all the um, metrics and, and traces and everything to there. Um, so, I was not sure if he was, okay, yeah, well, we are plenty of time. I was thinking that maybe the demo will fail much earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the thing is that um, now making your application observable is not a choice, especially because now also there are tools like uh, trace test that allows you to, to create tests based on your traces. So now also you can do that, that thing. Um, all these tools are like for not just when something is failing, it's also um, for finding where you are spending your resources. So in another way of making money is, is to spend less, okay? 
uh, this is pretty useful for this. And also there are things, uh, if you switch to use open telemetry, the things that also other signals like the profiling that right now, um, if you want to use it, you have to use things like Pyroscope, for instance, from Grafana, or, uh, well, other things like from Datadog and other, other agents. So also the, the, the things that like one or two months ago, Elastic donated all the agents, well, uh, it started the donation of the or their agents for profiling to the to the project to the open telemetry project. So as very soon, right, we are going to be able also to see that in open telemetry. Um, also, you need to evaluate what it, does it make sense to instrument. Um, and what I showed you, right, is like I try to instrument everything. Uh, something that you can do is to exclude some libraries that you maybe don't want to have them um, instrumented, or maybe you can focus on something that is pretty uh, specific for your application, right? So maybe you can add some manual instrumentation there, but you don't need it with what, what we show uh, here, right? Um, and as I said, it's not just for debugging issues. Uh, if you are using things like, like this, this has one thing that I, I oh yeah, it's here, right? Um, I thought that this will not work, so I was not planning to show it. Uh, so the things that you hear, you can see even a graph that was generated from your metrics and everything. Um, I don't know how to do it bigger, um, but the thing is that you can see that there are three points, right? So are your applications and how they are connected. So imagine that you are an SRE, uh, you didn't code the applications, um, well, the things are changing, right? How the different endpoints are uh, interrelated between them, right? Um, because, well, you are doing CI, CD, um, having a lot of releases per day and everything. Um, so if something fails, they can see exactly how the system is actually connected from, from this single view, right? So you can see that application one is connected to, to, to application two and, and to application three. Um, oh, well, actually it's here, right? Um, so this is also, also something also pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and also the thing is that uh, you have this instrumentation, but also you need to store it. And storing uh, um, telemetry data is something that also has some cost. So usually when people are integrating with observability tools, their complaints are, hey, this is pretty expensive. Yeah, very likely because you are saving the, all the telemetry data from the last three months, and maybe very likely you don't need it, right? And this is not just for SREs. So if you watch, for instance, the previous talk, um, this is something that it can be also pretty interesting for you know, for developers um, because you can detect pretty easily things that very likely you are not able to reproduce locally, and um, you can see points right where you can we can you can improve. So thank you. Um, well, if you have any question or something. Uh, hi. <laughs> so um, we are now entering Q&A session. We got a lot of time asking questions, but as I love live coding, you already now get your cookie. Thank you. <laughs> so ask your question. Hi. Yes, so um, oh, sorry. sorry. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. And I, I really uh, like applaud you for not only live coding, but live Kubernetes cluster reconfiguration. <laughs> that takes a lot of you know cojones to do it. Uh, and I have a question for you. You sort of, sort of uh, just uh, went over it just quickly at your last slide. But if I instrumented everything, like you said, automatically, my company would fire me because they would run out of budget. So is there a way to uh, do sampling in this way, like reduce the amount of, of, of the traces being actually sent to? Yeah, something that you can do is to adjust from the open telemetry collector, for instance, you can adjust the sampling. So for instance, you can take, depending on what, is the policy that you need, and for different um, for different signals, signals, and everything, right? You can say things like uh, doing um, just the ten percent of the of the data this, that is sent, or maybe like just the data that has this other thing. Uh, something that also other companies are doing is that they are putting uh, one open telemetry collector uh, in between, right? And they are sending some data to maybe things like that and other things, and they are sending the rest of the data to something locally, right? Something that maybe is not so important or is just important for them, things like that. So with that, you can reduce, you can reduce the cost, right? But especially the thing related to the sampling is 
what you very likely are going gonna, are gonna to need. Mm. Okay. Thank you. L let me just put a question from Discord in between. So the uh, question is, the open telemetry Python and open telemetry Python contrib packages on GitHub are overwhelmed with issues, PRs. Do you know more about uh, where this is going and how the governance is handled? Um, I am not in the part related to Python. Um, there is uh, one, one sprint this, this Saturday with one guy that is mentioned there. Very likely you can ask uh, to him. But the thing is that there are a lot of working groups, so you can join to them. Um, and one of the things that they are pretty open, right? They allow you to like to ask things and, and well to to um, be included in the decisions and everything. Um, the things that if you go, for instance, I am part of the C call for the for the operator, for instance, right? So we are people from different companies and we take decisions, we vote even right about how to do things in one way or another. So um, very likely the rest of the things are are going to be the same, right? There are some rules that are written, um, yeah. Um, so now back on the microphone, it's your turn. <coughs> you got a question, huh? You? Yeah? You, no, you, you. 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 <laughs> yes, thank you. Hello? Yes, yes uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, uh, so uh, all the uh, tracing basically adds some overhead, but uh, does the Python version of Python uh, uh, instrumentation add a lot of overhead of uh, just a little? Yeah, well, the thing is that you have some, some overhead, right? Um, but. I mean, it's something that you have to measure. If it's worth it for you to have that overhead, but get all that information, or maybe not have the overhead, but be totally blind about what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, um, and this is something that I was talking about uh, to one, one person who is using a lot um, open telemetry, is that they before were sending a lot of logs and metrics and, and everything, right? Uh, so now they are just sending traces so the things that they are reducing the overhead there because they are, they are just sending one thing. And, and also they are not sending the metrics, they are calculating that in the back end. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they were measuring, right? And for them it was worth it to do it that way. Yes, definitely true, thank you. Are there more questions? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one more question. Uh, thanks again for the presentation. Um, and during the presentation you focused largely on server side applications. Um, I was investigating using this for Client side, I think you mentioned edge um, locations. Specifically, I'd like to implement this for a CLI application. Um, I'm just kind of wondering what your thoughts are and if you know anybody using this or any pitfalls to be aware of while doing it. Yeah, um, well, uh, I have not been using it, right? I know that there are some people that are using this um, for especially web applications, right? So for instance, in the case of Grafana, they have a, um, Grafana Baila, I think is the name of the project, where it's actually, well, uh, the, the library is right for open telemetry and other stuff in a way that you can consume them. Also, this week, this last week or the previous one, there was a blog post in the open telemetry blog about how to use open telemetry for uh, mobile applications. So it's going to be somehow related, right? So maybe cool. you can check. I'll check that out. Thanks. Um, I was wondering whether it was possible to put your code on GitHub so that we could have a yeah, More sure. Uh, anyway, you go to my GitHub account, right? You will see a lot of like workshop or demo or something. Very likely, all of them are the same, but with some small changes. Okay. So. All right. Thanks. You get plenty of time, so if someone has a question, first of all. If not, last chance. No. So again, thank you for this wonderful talk, live coding, and um, now, so thank you.